Hello, this is Mr. Philippeck, and this video is going to talk about DNA replication. And I think it's important to start off about why. Why do we need DNA replication? Well, if you remember, we start off as uh, one cell, and we begin to divide and divide and divide and divide all the way to where we have over you know, a trillion cells that make us up now. Well, in order to do that, in order to make sure that we have a continuity of DNA, DNA needs to be replicated uh, time and time and time again. Basically, it just means right here, like it says here, to copy. And so, again, we're going to start off here with, with one DNA molecule. And what we're going to end up with is two DNA molecules, each which are going to have half the original and half what we're going to call complementary strands, okay? And what's important to note is that without this replication, all right, we'd, be keep, we, we'd keep cutting the number of chromosomes in half. So, you know, for humans, we'd start off at 46, then we end up with 23, uh, and then, you know, it keeps going and going and going and going until eventually we whittle down to absolutely nothing. And remember, for our lives to keep going, uh, we need to have an equal number of chromosomes. Now, remember, because of the pairing, and remember those pairing relationships, uh, adenine always goes with thymine, cytosine always goes with guanine, we should always be able to pair up if given uh, half of a DNA strand. And so right here, we're given this strand, which is uh, thymine, adenine, guanine, cytosine, cytosine, guanine, thymine. And because we know the base pairing relationships, uh, it would be pretty easy to pair it up. And so I'm going to give you a, a, another uh, example here. And I want you to pause the video and see if you can come up with the other sequence here. And so let's say we had guanine, cytosine, thymine, adenine, adenine, cytosine. So I want you to pause the video and see if you got the correct answer there using uh, these base pairings. Well, hopefully you got that right. And uh, in order to replicate, remember that DNA is made up of a phosphate group attached to a sugar, attached to a nitrogen base. And uh, on the other side here, if I kind of draw across here, you know, we ha we'll have another nitrogen base attached to a sugar, attached to a phosphate group. Well, this bond right in here, right here, is a hydrogen bond. And this bond needs to be snipped or unzipped, as it says here, in order for DNA to open itself up to uh, replicate. And so the first thing that happens here is we get a separation of the two DNA strands. And so these hydrogen bonds, which are right here, get snipped, and then DNA opens itself up. And then free-floating nucleotides then begin to come in here and pair up, again, using that base pairing of adenine goes with thymine and cytosine goes with guanine. And again, as we can see here, uh, here we have the original strand, and, and those are both on the outside. And then on the inside, in light blue on the slide, we start to see the complementary strand. And remember, because we have complementary base pairing relationships, those nucleotides can easily just fill in all those holes. Uh, and then what happens here is that after the nitrogen bases kind of fill in, then the backbone is formed. Again, that backbone is of phosphate and sugar. And that 5-carbon sugar is, as you remember in the last video, is deoxyribose. And so these things form the backbone, all right? Which, again, if we think about a ladder, right? Here's the handrails, and then we have the steps of the ladder, the backbone would be these, these handrails right in here. And so this is where you'd see all the sugar and phosphate groups. So at the very end, we end up having a DNA molecule that is half original and half complementary. And uh, that's kind of a real important point. So um, we don't have a cell in our body right now that would have the exact copy of DNA when sperm bashed in the egg when we were made. Uh, and so it's important that we realize that, you know, 
we got half original and half complimentary. I still think it'd be pretty slick uh, if we were able to ever tag uh, that original strand of DNA and see if it still exists somewhere in our body. Well, here I, I have some practice for us again. What I'd like you to do right underneath here is to write down, either on a sheet of paper or in your mind, uh, what's going to pair with A. And what I'd like you to do is you know, pause the video and then uh, pick it back up and I'll show you the, the correct answers here. So again, we know the base pairing relationships are adenine goes with thymine, and cytosine goes with guanine. So with T, we would have A. And then with guanine, we'd have cytosine matchup. With cytosine, we'd have guanine. Adenine would have thymine. Thymine would match up with adenine. And guanine would match up with cytosine. And the most important thing is we need to practice. Uh, we need to be able to quickly determine the complementary strand, which is right here, with the original strand, which is right here. And we have to be able to make these uh, connections uh, very, very quickly in order for us to, to uh, fully understand and be able to do the next set of problems, which is going to be on transcription and translation. Basically, how do we go from DNA to a protein? So that's pretty much uh, DNA replication, and thanks for listening.